the United Kingdom. This is a country that I never thought I would cover. The region has never been seen as tough and has been the world's staple for a proper society. This of course is a general outside perception. So many people have no clue about the underworld that exists in the UK. Within every society there are the haves and the have nots, the privileged and the underrepresented. And because of this every city has nice areas and dangerous areas as well. London is no exception. The city is home to some dangerous streets where residents have to constantly watch their back. And in this episode, you'll be able to see how wild things can get. Welcome to South London, the city's most feared area. It's located across the river from the rest of the city, truly making it its own world. Londoners from across the river rarely come down to the south. This is mostly because of the snobby attitude of the north and west, but it's also because South London has a history of beef. Historically, two neighborhoods have been bitter rivals. This would be Brixton and Peckham. Each of these neighborhoods are huge, like over 70,000 residents apiece. However, they're also extremely dense, so you can easily walk from one to another. This made the rivalry so much worse because members on both sides could easily interact. Well, over the years, the Brixton Peckham rivalry got so bad that other neighborhoods had to choose a side, one of which was a small neighborhood just 10 minutes up the road. This would be Kennington, which has long been known as a better area of South London. However, Kennington does hold RGI housing, which is the equivalent of Section 8 in America. And within these buildings, things can get pretty rough. The Early Beginnings the story begins in 2011 when Kennington teens began attending Tennyson Academy. Tennyson Academy is where both Brixton and Kennington teens can attend. Well, at this time, Kennington had taken sides with Peckham in the beef, and naturally, this made the two neighborhoods bitter rivals. Well, given that, you'd expect the teens to be rivals as well, but that's not what happened. Thankfully, all of the students were able to overlook the rivalry and become close friends. The tight friendship remained throughout high school, but that's when everything fell apart. 2014. After graduating, some of the teenagers went off to college, but those who chose not to attend decided to hang out in their respective neighborhoods. Both Brixton and Kennington had older members making tons of money hustling in the streets. So naturally, the teens fell under their wing, and this meant adopting their beef as well. As a result, the Kennington teens cut off their Brixton friends, and this did not make them happy. So the former best friends became arch rivals just like that. Well, after a while, the Kennington teens wanted their own identity. So they got together and started the Harlem Spartans. Harlem is slang for money, and Spartans represents what they do to the streets of South London. And this would unfortunately end up being a correct assessment. But first, let me introduce you to the original seven members. First, you have Joshua Eduardo, also known as Blanco. Then you have Lotwan Griffiths, also known as S.A. Number three is Crosslawn Davis, also known as Biz. Then you have Najee's Max and LM. Sixth, you have Mukhtar Mac, also known as Miz or Mac. And finally, you have Samsodin Falolu, also known as TG Milian. All seven of the Harlem Spartans came out of the gates as wild as can be, and right off the bat they had five major rivals. First were their former friends from school. This would be 150, the biggest Spartan rival of them all. They reside in Angeltown, Brixton, and they are a wild group of guys. Next you have China Walk, who represent the China Walk housing project in Kennington. Geographically, these are the most immediate rivals to the Harlem Spartans. Then you have 061, a group of guys from the Tabard Gardens projects. Next would be 410, who hold down Brixton's Myatt's Field. And finally you have Zone 2, a feared gang in Peckham. So from the very start, the Harlem Spartans had rivalries all over South London. This made life extremely difficult to maneuver. However, the Harlem Spartans would initiate the first incident. And that takes us to Halloween 2014. On this festive day, an 061 member named David Maxwell, also known as Lil D, is hanging out in front of his hood store. 
That would be Pilgrimage Street, right across from the infamous Tabard Gardens. 2 p.m. A brand new Spartan named Chuds and his friend Ronnie ride out to the Tabard Gardens. On this mission, they're looking for any 061 member they can find. At 2.30, they locate Lil D right outside the store. So Chuds hops off the moped and chases him down. Not too long after, Chuds would be arrested due to surveillance cameras. In court, he ultimately pled down to 14 years. This was the moment when South London realized that the Harlem Spartans were serious. But aside from the streets, they also pursued another venture. In 2014, the members began recording songs in a local youth studio. Their initial songs saw local success, but nothing more than a few hundred thousand views. However, that would change when the Harlem Spartans adopted a new member. This would be Jariel O'Connor, also known as Lowski. Originally, Lowski was cool with 150. In fact, you can actually see him in Sneeko's music video. Well, something happened between him and 150, so he left to join their rivals. And the first thing he did was was get in the booth and record a 150 diss track. In the song, he openly reveals that he was once friends with 150 but is now rocking with the Harlem Spartans. And then he takes a major shot at them. He says they say 150 but it's really 146. Holy moly! This is attributed to the four members that they recently lost. Pistol, SQ, Gauze, and Jay Milla. Of course, 150 felt disrespected, especially because Lowski used to be their friend. But also because nor he or the Harlem Spartans had ever done anything to a 150 member. So in response, 150's rapper Styx would pull up to Harlem's block and post it on social media. Despite this attempt to make the Spartans look weak, their song exploded all over London. It eventually became the official song of the summer. This is because it was the most disrespectful drill song that South London had seen to date. Well, despite the success and fame, Lowski was still knee deep in the streets. Just two months after the release of the song, he would be arrested for possession of a knife. Yes, that's actually a crime in England, and Lowski would get sent to prison for two years. Now, without their popular rapper, the rest of the group needed to pick up where he left off. And that's exactly what they did. The Rise of the Harlem Spartans For the rest of 2016, the other rappers blew up more than Lowski ever had. On December 15th, they dropped a hit song called Call Me a Spartan. Then, exactly a month later, they dropped a song called Kennington Where It Started. The breakout song reached 17 million views. It ended up being a UK anthem and even caught the attention of Drake. At this point of stardom, millions of dollars are on the way. Concert tours, autograph signings, sponsorship deals, you name it. However, the Harlem Spartans may not have realized what they had on their hands. Either that or they were too far deep into the streets of South London. And this is why 2017 would be the beginning of the their fall from grace. In March of 2017, Harlem rapper Jojo was arrested for robbery and sentenced to seven years. And sadly, he wouldn't be the last one to go down. After Call Me a Spartan, TG Milian would become a star. The ladies loved him and the streets feared him. Well, at the same time, the rival 410 started blowing up as well, often dissing the Harlem Spartans. Specifically, a rapper named 410 Blacks and TG Milian was not a fan of this. That's because he and 410 Blacks were childhood best friends. And as we know, this can add fuel to the fire. March 16th, 2017. TG Milian drives out to Myatt's Field, where 410 is known to be. There, he spots his rival rapper in the car, so he rolls up right next to his window. The 410 rapper notices him and instantly speeds away, so TG Milian chases him through the narrow streets of London. The 410 rapper crashes, so TG Milian walks up to his window. Thankfully, the rapper Black survived, but TG Milian would go down after overwhelming evidence. This was the most bold decision that the local residents had ever seen. And because of this, TG Milian received 12 years. This was the third Harlem Spartans rapper to go down in under a year. And at this point, only three of their popular rappers were left. Biz, Blanco, and Miz or Mac. This trio actually did a great job and was loved by the fans. 
Miz or Mac was even crowned as the Beyonce of the group. On top of this, Biz and Blanco had their own unique style. They released a song called Kent that reached 4 million views. Then on April 30th, 2017, the trio released their biggest song to date. This would be a song called No Hook, which reached 8 million views. However, the fans noticed something strange. Blanco and Miz or Mac are not in the video. What they later found out is that they both had been arrested in Brixton. Apparently, they took a cab ride to their ops block with a samurai sword and two blowers. While circling the area, the cab was pulled over and the two Spartans were searched. As a result, they both received six years in prison. This now meant that five Spartan rappers are locked up which ultimately meant that only two rappers were left, Biz and S.A. The two continued to make music, but it was nothing compared to what the Harlem Spartans used to be. And on top of this, their main focus remained on the streets of South London. And that takes us to the wildest incident of them all. July 25th, 2018. Harlem rapper S.A. wants to go on a mission against his 150 rivals in Brixton. So being that most of his friends are locked up, he contacts the Harlem Spartans' closest allies. This would be Moscow 17. This is a feared group of guys located in Brandon Estate. Allegedly, the first person that S.A. contacts is the rapper Incognito, but he declines. However, a young Moscow member agrees and pulls up to meet S.A. So the Moscow member drives a moped with S.A. on the back. They arrive in Angeltown, Brixton, and the search is on. After 10 minutes of driving around, they find 150 rapper J. Ban sitting in his car. So they ride up to his window and S.A. pulls out his blower. It jams, so J. Bans hops out of his car to defend himself. The Moscow driver pulls off when he notices that S.A. is injured, but instead of taking him to a hospital, he sadly dumps him off on the road. S.A. screams for help and some passersby come to check on him. They call an ambulance, but sadly it's too late. S.A. was just 18 years old and truly a star in the making. The Harlem Spartans were upset with the Moscow driver's selfish decision. And directly after the incident, something strange would happen. Moscow 17 rapper Incognito was found deceased in his neighborhood. To this day, no one knows who did it or why it happened. It could have been the Harlem Spartans 150 or anyone else. Either way, South London was getting way out of control. Nothing like this had ever happened before, at least not to this extent. The rest of 2018 was really bad in South London. This is partly because the Harlem Spartans kept sliding on 150. This resulted in four members receiving over 10 years in prison. It's safe to say that the police were all over the Spartans, monitoring their every move. The Harlem Spartans' demise is incomprehensible, so many members gone in such a short period of time. So at this point, all they had is Biz and Lowski getting out soon. For the longest time, Biz was able to stay out of trouble, but a very strange occurrence would put this to the test. The random diss. In December of 2019, a group of guys from all the way across South London began dissing SA. The guys are from the district of Lewisham and call themselves the Catch Pages. Well, of course, Biz wanted to figure out why they dissed his late friend. December 6, 2019. Biz messages the two dissers on social media. These would be Jediah Param and Elijah Morgan. Well, in the messages, they agree to meet up at Deptford Creek. This is a neutral area where both sides can feel comfortable. 3 p.m. Biz drives out to Deptford Creek. A few minutes later, the Catch Pagans arrive in a taxi cab. When they arrive, Biz allegedly tries to attack them but drops his weapon. So the Catch Pagans jump out of the cab and pounce on him relentlessly. Biz tries to get away, but his attempt is unsuccessful. Another Harlem Spartan gone. Biz was ultra talented just like the rest, which makes it even more sad. Well, thankfully, the entire incident was recorded on surveillance cameras. Both of the men pleaded non-guilty, claiming self-defense. However, their actions were deemed as excessive and they both were charged in the first degree. Each member got a life sentence, even though the courts proved that Biz was the initial aggressor. That's because in England, they don't have the same rights as we do in America. Do you guys think that this is fair? Let me know in the comments. So here we are at the start of 2020 and let me list off all of the members and what happened to them. First, Lowski missed three crucial years in the Harlem Spartans' growth. Then, Chuds got sentenced to 14 years for the passing of Lil D. 
Then Harlem rapper Jojo got seven years for robbery. Then Ms. Ormac and Blanco went down for possession of arms in a taxi cab. They both got six years. Then TG Milian got 12 years for sliding on 410. After this, SA passes away on the moped. And finally, Biz passes away at the hands of the Catch Pagans. So who was left? Loski was released in 2019, but this was to a whole new Kennington. All of his friends were gone, and the Harlem Spartans music buzz was completely completely done. And unfortunately, shortly after his release, Loski would be arrested again. So in conclusion, you would assume that the Harlem Spartans are done. And musically, you would be correct. All of the talented rappers are gone. But in South London, the Spartans are as active as they ever were. In fact, since September of 2021, the Harlem Spartans and 150 have been going back and forth. All I have to say is, wow, this story was insane. So to all my fellow Americans, London may not be Detroit or Chicago, but if you think it's sweet, you are so, so wrong. Overall, it's sad to see incidents like this escalate, especially given that London was never this bad. On the bright side, the police seem to do a great job of investigating and putting people away. The Harlem Spartans are truly a case of what could have been. Incredible talent that could have taken over the UK for much longer than they did. And on that note, I hope you enjoyed the video and make sure to leave a like and subscribe. Peace!